Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Here we are. Another day with the camera and us. What's new? What's going on? Hey, are you alright? He had a lovely little outing this morning. Yeah. I've been letting him out every morning for like 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and then he'll come back in. But he's very good today. Didn't climb any fences or any trees. Yeah. He just had a roll about in the grass and then sat in the sun for a bit. Hmm. And then he came to the back door and was like, it's time for food. Yeah. Feed me now. It's a good day today for theatre, I guess. Hamilton's been released. Yep. And Frozen 2, even though it's not theatre, but it's sort of Disney musical. It's a musical. On Disney Plus, excited? Very excited. You're, yeah, very excited. We're going to watch Hamilton tonight. We are. I've never seen it, so I'm looking forward to it. It's really good. I yeah. saw it last time. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Any news? Anything that's going on? I don't think so. No news. Um, I have no news, really. No news. I was very active on TikTok yesterday. You did four TikToks, didn't you? Very active on TikTok. How are they doing? I actually haven't checked this morning. I've been sharing all of my stage door stories. Yeah. There's this girl called um, Call Center Life. I think that's what, it's, what it is on TikTok. And her TikToks make me absolutely howl because mm. it's all about like experiences sad on the phone with people. So I did a couple like stage door ones in the style of. Um, yeah, no announcements really. Um, some people in the comments are obsessed with my hair and the length it's going to. Um, I mean, I don't know what to do with it, to be honest. I've sort of adopted the old top knot, but people are like, I think cut more, it off. Yeah, they're more bothered by it than you are. Yeah. And then uh, we are. Not like... It's just, it's just hair, yeah. guys. Um, yeah. But I will get it cut when we, I can get it cut. But I'm not going to rush and get it cut because I don't feel like I should. Or mm. want to queue up for like two hours because yeah. I only can imagine how busy the barbers are going to be. Or yeah. any hairdressers. Um, so yeah, the hair is the hair. Mm -hmm. I'm trying my best to tame it as much as I can. I know it's a bit of a mullet, but I'm trying. Right, so today um, we got an email a couple of days ago from someone called Jackie Murphy. So they've said, I'm Jackie Murphy, I'm from the USA. Since Carrie is a Haunted Mansion fan, I was wondering if you guys believe in or have any encounters with the superstitions, like saying good luck instead of break a leg, or saying Macbeth in the theatre, or whistling, or la 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 yeah. la la la. So, I was thinking, what are these superstitions? Because I've heard some of them, but not all of them. Yeah. So I googled top 10 superstitions. So we're going to go through and have a little look. Okay. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to let you read, because you're much better than I. Me? Yeah, you can oh, read. Right. Um, so, uh, this is number 10. And we'll go down to one, and it says superstition and origin. So if it's Ooh. interesting, we'll have a bit of origin as well. Okay. So this is, do we believe in it, or have we ever actually heard of it? Or is that just a load of baloney? The first one, number 10, is no real jewellery or money allowed on stage. The only thing I've ever heard, and it's not a superstition thing, but don't bring coins on stage, because someone always drops them, and they go down the tracks. Oh, see, Les Mis used to have... Coins that everyone used to get paid, and they used to be like the big. I mean, it was really funny because it was like English halfpennies. Yeah. Because they were quite. I think that's what they were. They were pretty big, even though we were in France. Yeah. But yeah, everyone used to get given a coin. Yeah. And then as you came on stage, you used to get put it into the bowl. Did and they never go in the, in the track? No. I think so. Everyone had really big pockets in their costumes, uh -huh. and then about thirty seconds later, everyone would take those costumes oh, off. Right. Um. But everyone was meant to put their coin in the, the pot on the way off, mm. off stage. But when I was Eponine, I used to get given a coin um, by Jean Valjean and had to put it in my coat pocket. And then that coat would be taken off and taken back upstairs. Mm. So by the end of a week, I'd have like eight coins in my pocket. I'd be like jingling. Mm. Um, and there'd always be a call out like at least once a month being like, Miss Hope Fletcher, can you please check your pockets for coins <laughs> as we've run out downstairs? Yeah, <laughs> yeah like, I mean, that, I don't, I've never heard I've that. I've never heard that either. It says the origin is in a, the origin is in at least, oh my god. That's, what, yeah. that's why I gave it to you, I was like, I'm not reading all this. The origin is in the, in the Elizabethan theatre, it was common for money and jewels to go missing if an actual technician was down on their luck. Uh... So it's to do with stopping people from stealing. Yeah, I think like jewellery and stuff is never a thing on theatre, it's, it's always like well, fake pearls. Yeah, costume jewellery. Costume yeah. jewellery, like, so you wouldn't want to rob that anyway. Well, um, that's, but this is why. Yeah, yeah. This is why it's fake jewellery now. Mm. Well, I think it's probably, now we have the means to make fake jewellery, like, and fake stuff, like fake banknotes and mm. fake stuff. 
But maybe back then, mm. it was just it was effort to make fake coins or fake crowns. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Sometimes you get told off if you got like money or like phones bringing them on stage just because of the automation. Yeah. And it can go down the track. Mm. And if like something falls down those tracks, it's like the end of time. Yeah, yeah. Because then they've got to like rip the like stage up yeah. and find whatever someone dropped down there and automation slash stage management would be pissed. They'll hate you for it, yeah. Number nine is one I have heard, but I don't know if anyone ever does it because it's kind of not up to us, but it's leaving a seat open, like leaving a seat free, like not selling that seat. Okay. Specifically for the theatre ghost, so they can watch the show. Yeah, I've never heard that and I'm sure they probably don't do that. Mm. I mean, I can't imagine Cameron McIntosh being like, now nah, we're not going to sell that seat for the whole year. Yeah, just for the theatre ghost. <laughs> just for the theatre ghost. I think if I owned a theatre, I would. Yeah. Because I think that's really sweet. Yeah. And I, I feel like I believe in that enough to... So what's the origin from that? Many theatres have reported that their buildings contain spirits of people who have performed there, worked on a production as a technician, or were involved in the construction of the building, even if the person did not die there. Mm. It's common for theatres to leave a seat or two open to honour the theatre ghosts. Another sad. thought is that if ghosts are watching the show, they won't venture on stage to meddle with the production. Oh, there we go. I've not heard that one, I don't think. I've heard that one, but I don't, I don't think people do it. No. Number eight is leave the ghost light on when you leave. I know this one. Yeah, I know this one and I did this one because I had a ghost light in my dressing room at the Haymarket. Yeah. So every night I would switch it on. It's a really like eerie but like amazing light, isn't mm. it? It's just like a pole with mm. like a bulb. And a little cage around yeah. the bulb, yeah. It's really like amazing. So what's that for? A ghost light is a single light typically placed downstage centre that illuminates the edge of the stage. Many theatres have reports of ghosts who visit occasionally or maintain permanent residence in the building, but this superstition may help prevent more ghosts from inhabiting the theatre. Mm. Ghost lights are used so that a technician or an actor can find their way across the stage without tripping over the set or props in their search for a light switch. Sorry. Okay. Um, but I've also heard that people put ghost lights on because usually the ghosts that inhabit theatres were once actors and that's why they inhabit the theatres so it's a light for them to do their own performances no. by when everyone's gone home I always think about staying overnight in the theatre and what that would be like and how eerie that would be That would be terrifying But in, in the Haymarket, didn't Bradley Cooper stay in that dressing room? Yeah So like the number one dressing room which, which you were in Yeah, there's like it, a bed It was pretty there. big for a dressing room and had a little bed in it and apparently Bradley Cooper stayed there Yeah but I mean, that must be eerie just staying in a, in a theatre on your own. I would lock myself in that dressing room. I wouldn't yeah. go anywhere else in the building. Because it had its own toilet and its own shower. And yeah, you wouldn't have to go anywhere. But still, like, you'd hear a sound and be like, oh my god. Yeah, I'd be like, sod that. Wonder what makes this so scary. Just big, empty, open spaces with lots of history. Yeah. <laughs> Number seven is don't wear blue. I've heard this one. So it's bad luck to wear blue on stage unless you wear silver with it. Did you wear silver? I mean, every part I've ever sort of played is worn blue. <laughs> I, I mean, is it the colour silver or actual silver? Because I always wore silver earrings as Veronica. Mm. And I always had a big silver locket for Fontaine. Mm. I definitely didn't have any silver for Beth. I had a silver engagement ring for Wednesday. She wore blue as well. Mm. I don't think I've ever wore blue. The only thing, the only thing blue I've ever worn is jeans. Mm. Wore a lot of blue jeans in my yeah. life on stage. In the older days of theatre, blue was one of the most expensive dyes to obtain. Theatres that were struggling would use blue dye in their costumes to try fool their audiences into believing the theatre was successful. Ah. Inevitably, the theatre would go under because of the cost of the costumes. If a theatre had a wealthy donor, sometimes called an angel, they would be able to include both blue and silver in their costumes, proving the theatre was performing well financially. So, oh, so, so if you just had blue, it was like you were faking it. You were faking your success and your wealth. Yeah. But if you had blue and silver, it was like, look how wealthy we are. It's like, please buy tickets. Yeah. <laughs> Number six is one I've definitely never heard of, and it's a bit weird. Number six is give the gift of graveyard flowers. Yeah, I read this before. It's considered good luck to give actors flowers from a graveyard after the closing night of a show. Yeah, what? Why would you do that? Is that like graveyard as in you go to a yeah. forest and go, hey, listen, oh. can I have like flowers for a graveyard? Or you go, I'm going to go down to the local cemetery this, and grab some flowers. To give, actors from a, to give actors flowers from a graveyard. 
That's a bit mean, isn't it? Many times performers and their actor friends wouldn't have enough money to buy fresh flowers from the market, so they went to a local cemetery and took flowers that had been left on a grave. Graveyard flowers were also given on closing night to represent the death of the show and the transient nature of theatre. If, if you came to me after, like, say, Back to the Future clothes, yeah, and you're like, here we are, Ollie, the final night, you did it, yeah. I'm like, where are they from? And you're like, oh, like, a grave. Yeah. I'm like, go put them back. Yeah. I was like, there's no way you can, like, grave rob, effectively. Yeah. Go put them back. It's different back then, though, isn't it? Yeah, but people are really superstitious, so people might out there do this. That's true, yeah. People let superstitions run their sort of mm. psyche. So don't do that. Don't steal flowers from graves. Do other things. Yeah. Number five is no mirrors on stage. I didn't know that. Mirrors on stage. I mean, I would, uh, I'm just thinking for me, is that superstition? It, it, I mean, it, or is that just safety? Well, I also think this is just, mirrors have a lot of superstition attached to them anyway, because it just says having mirrors on stage is considered bad luck. If one breaks, it means bad luck for the theatre. You're like, if a mirror breaks in your house, you're like, oh, seven years, bad luck. Mm. So it's kind of just that superstition just taken and put in a theatre. Yeah. Because there are mirrors on stage. Like, you do have mirrors, like, yeah. on, in set pieces and stuff. But what they normally do with mirrors, this is very boring, but they like sort of spray it with like some sort of like grey thing. Mm. So it's very murky. But I think why that is, is because if light hits it, it just doesn't like shine back into the audience. Yeah, this says having mirrors on, this is the origin. Having mirrors on stage can cause many technical issues, like reflecting light back into the audience's faces, oh, into genius. the eyes of technicians or lighting areas of the stage that aren't supposed yeah. to be lit. Number four? Number four. Bad dress, good show. I know this one. I know this one and I disagree, I've always disagreed with it. I just think it's a way out. <laughs> and I hate, not I hate, but when someone's like, bad dress, good show guys, it's like, no. Good dress, great show. Yeah. It's just trying to make everyone feel better that we yeah. had an awful dress run. Like, yeah, 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 you, uh, you fell off stage and you caught fire, but tonight's gonna be great. Yeah. Just like, no, nah, I, I disagree with that one. I think it is just trying to make everyone feel good. Yeah. And try to go like, hey, it's gonna be fine. Yeah. Have you ever had any like really bad dresses? Yeah. Oh, you Les Mis one, right? Didn't you get up some bit Les Mis? Oh, that was just a bad show, like, the show was fine, uh, but I just had a few like practical things like costume and hair that everyone was sort of faffing over and that was, that was just stressful for me. But Chitty was maybe the worst dress room I've oh, ever had. Yeah. Oh my god, Chitty was a nightmare. Mm. The car broke, nothing technical worked, everyone forgot their lines. In fact, it wasn't even the dress run, because we had a, it was really weird, we had a dress run and then a week off, yeah, like the whole cast yeah. had a holiday. And it was when we came back and did the get-in, just everything went wrong in the get-in. Because we were going into a new event. Oh, it was just a nightmare. And it says, Origin. Some theatre professionals think that bad opening nights are caused by actors becoming too comfortable with the success of their performance on the final dress, and they therefore aren't as focused and prepared on opening night. Mm. So it's like getting complacent, like being like, oh, we know what we're doing, so we had a really yeah. good dress run, and see, then opening night going. See, I find that wrong. the other way around, as in, it's after the opening night. It's always a second show. Oh yeah, second show blues is like the worst. Yeah, yeah. it's the one where so you've opened, you've done the first one, and because everyone's on like second show syndrome. No, no, sorry, on the first show oh. everyone's like, this has to be right. Like I stand here and this is my thing. Yeah. And I grab that prop, and if I on. drop that prop, the show's over, and everyone does everything like meticulously yeah. to make sure it's right. Then they nail it, go out that night, and go yeah, we're open, and it's the second night where they're like, oh my god, and they yeah. fuck it. I like musicals, there's now following you on Twitter. Yeah, thank you, I like musicals. Number three, no whistling in theatre. I've heard this before. Mm. I don't know its origin, but I, it wouldn't offend me. Oh, see, I get, really fu I get really funny about it just because Michael Ball was so funny about it. And oh, I remember really? him like telling everyone off when I was a kid. And I don't whistle in the theatre, and he used to make people like go outside and turn around three times and spit on the floor or whatever it was. <laughs> and that's just, I've just like, yeah. adopted that from him because I remember how like and he was still like it in Les Mis and really? if ever he heard anyone whistling he'd be like who's whistling yeah like I mean I'm not a whistler so I mean I wouldn't really no, me either. potter around and whistle but the reason for it is before walkies or comms were invented techs would use a system of whistles to communicate with each other mm. if a tech other than the stage manager whistled another tech might call a cue before it was due for example if a rigger heard a, a whistle too soon 
they may have dropped a backdrop too early, causing serious injury to another technician or actor on stage. That's amazing. I knew that. I never thought about that. Yeah. Never, never put that together. So that's why no one else was allowed to whistle, because if they whistled, it could set off a series of cues that weren't yeah. meant to happen yet. Because I think there was, there was like, I mean, I think there were several stories or several like rumours that, um, like the main cause of death within theatre was like pieces of scenery or like sandbags oh. in the wind. Because obviously it was like the backdrop would come up as sandbags and the wings would mm. come down and those sandbags would often like drop on people's heads and people yeah. would die and or get like really injured. I remember a story about 9 to 5, the musical, on the, the first UK tour, so not the one that's just gone out like years ago. Yeah. Um, I think Bonnie Langford was in it. And basically they didn't have time to tech at 2. Oh God. So they roughly teched at one in the game, really rough. Basically what happened was, because I've not seen 9 to 5, but I think there's quite a lot of automation. Mm. Um, and there's like bits where like desks come down and, or slide on. Yeah. They said at one, literally like people were like ducking because it was coming down too quick. Like oh it was gosh. like well dangerous. And it at one finished and they were like, right, all the cats were like, we're not going on. Yeah, we're not, we're not doing that too. Because they were like, at one is the act that we teched. Mm. So we're not even teched at two and you're going to wing it. Um, so they, they didn't go on, they brought the iron in and uh, Bonnie Langford went out and did a Q&A. Brilliant. With, with everyone for about oh, two hours while all the rest of the cast were behind the eye and going tech in the show for act two. Yeah. That's crazy. Number two is say break a leg, not good luck. We know this one. I can't remember the origin that I heard because I know break a leg stems from loads of different yeah. places. This might not be right, but I remember something about a curtain and like, if you break a leg, it means like curtain goes up and down or something with a curtain call. I don't know. It means something to be good. Break a leg. Well, this says, it says there's a few origins of this particular superstition. The first comes from Elizabethan England, when actors were sometimes thrown money after a good performance. They would kneel down to pick up the coins, breaking the, st like, the straight line of their legs. Uh -huh. So like they'd be bending their legs. Um, so saying break a leg meant, I hope you get loads of money at the end of the show, yeah. basically. Another origin comes from the vaudeville era, when there were multiple acts scheduled, but not all of them went on. The curtains on the side of the stage are called legs. And if a vaudeville actor were to break a leg, they would have made it on stage to perform that night and get paid. Alright. So like, they'd hope the curtains were opened for them, basically. Oh, right. So breaking a leg meant the leg of the the thing that opened the curtain. So it's like, hope you break, like break a leg. Hope you get on stage. Hope you make oh, it on okay. tonight. I hope the leg of the curtain is broken for you. Yeah, because like I guess that, that sort of that's sort of like a mix of what I heard, but obviously someone just sort of. Because I heard it was like that, because then the curtain would close and then they would open it again. And it, yeah, I heard that as and, well. And they would clap and then they would open it again. It's like, oh, break a leg, smash it, basically. Yeah, that's what I heard as well. So it's sort of that, but not. And the final origin comes from taking bows after a show. When an actor has finished a performance, they often place one leg behind the other to bow during applause from the audience. And the final one... Remember, you know... Is don't say Macbeth. Which is, yeah, it's hard if you do Macbeth. I guess. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the only exception. It's the Scottish play, isn't it? Yeah, the People Scottish say. play. The Scottish play. Well, I'm not superstitious, so... I mean, I wouldn't say it. I wouldn't want to, like, psych someone out. Yeah. I'd be like, Macbeth. Yeah, I wouldn't say it. Um, but also, how much cause do you actually have to say Macbeth if you're not in Macbeth? Yeah. Like, I've never found myself, like, just desperate to say Macbeth on a backstage or having a conversation specifically about that play. Yeah. Often referred to as the Scottish play, Macbeth was often performed by theatres that were in financial trouble. Companies would spend so much money on the production that they would go bankrupt instead of saving a theatre. <laughs> the other explanation of this superstition lies in the legend that the witch's line in Shakespeare's play are real incantations, and uttering the name Macbeth without performing the play is seen as a mockery of the witch's ceremony. Oh, the ritual used to counter the mention of Macbeth goes as follows. Exit the theatre, spin around three times and spit over your left shoulder, curse and knock to be let back inside of the theatre. That is what Michael used to make you do if, you, if he heard you whistling. Oh my God. Yeah. When you said about the uh, companies like closing because he did Macbeth, it's probably because Macbeth had a blue costume and was like in silver. Yeah. <laughs> well, there we go. That's all of them. Well, there we go, guys. That's ten superstitions. There are superstitions. Writing's on the wall. Are you superstitious? I am, a bit, yeah. Not, like, hugely. 
Yeah. But I am, yeah. Not to the point where I'd make someone else, like, go outside and do, like, silly things and whatever. Like burpees and stuff. Yeah, I wouldn't, like, impose my superstitions on anybody else. I might be like, don't whistle, or I might, like, you know, <sighs> tell someone else the superstition, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you're not meant to whistle, or you're not meant to do this, or whatever. But I definitely wouldn't whistle, say Macbeth, or do various other things, because I feel superstitious about them. Yeah, I don't really believe in superstition. Yeah. Um, but I wouldn't do it for, or say it, or do it, or whatever, for not my sake, for their for sake. For the sake of the people who were, yeah. because yeah. if someone it was, I'd only be like, Macbeth, have a good opening night. Yeah, yeah, in the wings, like, ooh, whistling. Yeah. Because then that's just being a knob. Yeah. Um, so, but then again, all those sort of things I don't think I'd ever do. Yeah, I mean, they all stem from, like, very old, Yeah. like, an old era. They're things that we just wouldn't necessarily do now anyway. There's no, like, modern day things that we missed out there that people don't do. Don't really? Say, no. Maybe uh, superstitions are, like, dying a bit. Just... I don't think so. I think there'll always be something new. You think? Yeah. That's what I'm saying, is that I can't think of anything new. But I bet back then, like back then it was just a technical thing for them. Back yeah. then it was like, don't whistle in the wings because Larry the techie's got a whistle and you know, you might bring in Brian too Larry. soon. You know what I mean? <laughs> Brian. The guy comes down. <laughs> Who did bring in Brian? It sounds like he's sitting in a harness. <laughs> Reveal Brian. Wow. Right, there is a castle on a cloud. You know what I mean though, like, <laughs> <laughs> back then it was just a technical thing, yeah. it was like a practical thing, whereas now it's like turned into a, su a superstition. So it'd be like, no phones. Yeah. Like, no phones on stage, it's bad luck, but really it's like, because it, like, interferes with the mic, so yeah. it goes down the track. exactly, so things that aren't superstitious to us, because they're just practical things that we shouldn't be doing. Mm they'll turn into superstitious things for people in a hundred years' time. Interessante. You know what I mean? Yeah, really good. And like saying break a leg, like back then, break a leg was an actual thing to say because there was a, like, mm. curtains were wound in by a leg. Whereas now we still just say break a leg even though that's not a thing, but we all know it means good luck, even though we don't Standing really know Standing ovation. It It'd be something like that. Have a st Oi! Stop it. You'd be like, have a standing O. Standing O. Yeah, standing O, yeah. You're like, yeah, standing O. Well, well, that was that, really. There we go. Superstitions. That's fun. Yeah? yeah? You like that one? I like that one, yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, so, are you superstitious? Is that a thing? Any crazy stories? Yeah. Has anything ever happened because you said Macbeth with a pussy whistled? Yeah. Well, thanks for popping by, everyone. Be safe out there. Don't. Steal flowers from a grave. Yeah, I think that's a to give that's, to cast members. That's the main one, I think. No grave. You might be. Flowers. Yeah, you probably get away with whistling, like quietly, saying the Beth to yourself. Mm. But stealing Steal. flowers from a grave nah. is a no-no. Don't do that. Yeah, stealing from someone's garden. <laughs>